thank you for signing up for this session today and thank you for making it across lots of different time zones it looks like from from your um from what Anne Anne was saying at the beginning um so this session is going to be um around an hour but uh, around 40 45 minutes of me sharing some thoughts ideas tools and techniques and so forth just a very brief introduction to myself um my um background is in education originally um and then um 21 years ago this this year i moved across into working um full time as a counselor as a coach as a hypnotherapist um and a trainer and i've been working with the steve student foundation now for as long as it's been i can't remember how long that is and how long have have, have we been established now it's um coming up to 14 years i believe wow that's My amazing goodness. yeah so for 14 years and um i've been involved with various projects along the way including a couple of projects with uh colleagues from uh teachers from sierra leone which has, has been brilliant i put on the end of that that list of things that i do long-suffering dog parents become a recent dog owner there's my dog uh, with my friend, James. I, I would say I'm, I'm a cat person having a dog experience. I, always, up until um, two years ago, we'd always always had um, cats, not dogs. But that's Dory, the Tibetan terrier. So why be interested in this session? The reasons why you might have turned up to this session, you or someone else you might know has experienced their life being knocked off course in some way. And... Um, We'll we'll explore to today in this session the the kind of idea of what we might call a linear life, uh, the the life that we're often brought up to believe should be the way life should work out. But very often it doesn't work out that way, and for all sorts of reasons, um, we can get into difficulty um, without our life um, not running smoothly and and the way we'd like it to. You might be interested in this because you'd like to know how to manage difficult thoughts and emotions better. I'm going to introduce to you to today. Um, a few different ways of thinking about and looking at challenges and difficulties um, you, by changing thoughts and emotions that are not working for you, that are, are difficult. And sometimes we think that our thoughts and our emotions just happen to us. But um, with the right kind of approach and the right techniques and tools, we can actually change things around thoughts and, and emotions that are, um, are not working for us. You might like to have some ways of thinking about life uh, if you've had setbacks that are empowering. And, um, and as I wrote there, that glisten with hope and possibility. So I think when we've been through difficult, challenging times, um, whether it's ourselves or other people, so it's, it's the hope that we have that things will improve um, for us that um, helps us to keep working towards change and, and improving our situation. And if you're intrigued by the idea of the perfectly wonky life movement, as I call it, this group of people that's that's building um, with, with this interest in what are all the, the ways that we can recover from um, difficulties, challenges, trauma in our life, and you'd like to know more about it, then that's another reason to be here. And I'll be showing you some ways that you can um, join in that community uh, a little bit later. <laughs> a little bit about the perfectly wonky life um for, for in the in the next um 40 minutes or so i'm going to share with you a little bit about how the perfectly wonky life movement came about um and it was actually born in a in a shop in a supermarket um and i'll say a little bit about how that was quite a funny story about how it came about um what is a wonky life and what's a perfectly wonky life so i'm going to just define those offer you some ways of thinking about a, a life that's gone off course and how you can think in different ways about that. Um, a bit about the course that's um, that's available, the Perfectly Wonky Life course. I'm gonna share some specific tools and strategies that you could use, um, and then some ways you can find out more. So that's what I'll be sharing um, today. So the wonky life and the Perfectly Wonky Life. So for some of us, we, when we're born, we are surrounded by people in our community, in our family, in our wider community, um, and they put a lot of expectations on us and they offer us ideas about um, how our life will unfold. And this idea 
um, I call the linear life. And often the linear life is, uh, it comes from the idea that we'll grow up, have a great childhood, um, we'll get some kind of education, um, we'll get some work or a career and we'll follow that. Um, we, we'll have a partner and we'll um, uh, perhaps have children, so we'll have a family. Um, and then at some point when we've worked for a very long time, we might be lucky enough to be in a position to retire and then we'll live happily ever after. And for some of us, we're, we've, we've been fed fairy tales as well as we go through our lives. And the, the idea of happily ever after uh, is something that, um, uh, it, it, you know, is, is an expectation that, that comes with that. The wonky life is something that... Um, I call the, the, this wonky life the idea that so, at some point, so for, for many of us, life goes off course. So it might be that there are illnesses that you or um, happen to you or your family. It may be that there are life events or ways of looking at your life and, and who you are, ways in which you feel that you maybe don't fit in with those around you. And that um, <clears throat> that diversion away from what the community the society around you says should be is the wonky life and when we set ourselves up with this and it's often very unconscious idea that we should achieve certain things in life we should have certain goals and steps along the way and for whatever reason that doesn't happen we it can leave us feeling like we don't fit in or like we're not successful um, as a result of that the perfectly wonky life is um what i brought together um I brought together over the last um decade to look at ways in which we can um if if life has gone off course if we we do feel that we've we've gone into a wonky life rather than a linear life. There are way, what are the ways in which we can still feel great about ourselves? That we can still um, we can recover from the challenges and the difficulties that we face, and that we can um, uh, lead a life where we can be productive and contribute to um, uh, our lives, our families, and our friends and and our wider community. So. Um, the, the way that the perfectly wonky life came around, and, and I, I don't know whether this will be true for all uh, all of you in different parts of the world, but um, in England, in the UK, we have had for some years now um, certain, I, I, I'm not sure if it's a myth or not, but certain regulations about the quality of fruit and vegetables. And... So, for example, bananas, uh, there was a regulation for the perfect size, shape of banana. And a banana shouldn't be too curved, according to these regulations. I know I'm saying this out loud and it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, <laughs> and um, so what what happens is that the, the, the supermarkets that, that we have here, so the big supermarkets in the UK, like uh, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Waitrose, um, Aldi, uh, Lidl, um, they they all have these kind of designs on um, or these 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 um, quality standards, which don't just affect um, how the food tastes, but what it looks like. So there's this wonderful um, thing that's emerged in the last maybe seven or eight years um, called wonky fruit or wonky vegetables. And so if you go into certain supermarkets now, you can buy the most extraordinary shaped fruit and vegetables. And um, some of them look exactly like that picture that's on the screen like right now. And um, but, but prior to that, you wouldn't find those sorts of vegetables in mainstream supermarkets. You'd only find them in places like um, small um, village or town um, greengrocer stores. So how the perfectly wonky life movement came to be um, is about how long ago? 13 years ago now. Um, so it had been about the time, a time just before I, I started involvement with the Steve Sinnott Foundation and um, I, I consider myself to have been very lucky uh, in life you know I did um, uh, grow up and get an education and I had a career 
um, for for ten years in education, um, a short spell in uh, in a supermarket actually, um, but didn't particularly enjoy it. And uh, when I got to the age of um, what was it, around about forty, um, a, a number of things happened really quickly to me uh, in my life. I lost three very close or two f- friends and a family member. Um, died in very quick succession Um, and at the same time my relationship of 17 years um, my partner and I um, separated so I went through a a divorce Um, at that time um, because of the way that things work here um, if you've got plenty of money and my partner had plenty of money and I didn't um, then and you can hire some fancy lawyers then um, the amount of wealth that you have between you cannot necessarily be fairly distributed. And that pretty much happened. So I pretty much walked away from that situation uh, pretty pretty penniless. But the thing that was most catastrophic at that time was I had a really bad head injury. And in amongst all of this going on, um, whilst on my push bike cycling through town where where I live here in in Malvern, I was um, involved in a hit and run accident and I was knocked off my bicycle and um, I was knocked unconscious. Uh, I I was pushed into the back of another car uh, and um, taken to hospital. I had very little awareness of what was going on uh, around that. But I kind of, um, but then for about six to nine months after that, I had absolutely no short term memory, so I couldn't work. Um, I I really couldn't contribute in in any way. Um, And I was really reliant on friends and family at that time to to help me and support me. Um, And I remember as I started to come out of that um, experience, that as I started to get bits of my short term memory back, I started to be having the most incredibly strong emotion really devastating emotions around all the things that had happened um and um that emotion took me into a very low place my mental health was in a was really at rock bottom i was finding it really difficult to function on a day-to-day basis um and i couldn't remember basic things like you know how to um uh how to look after myself on a kind of day-to-day basis um and I'm, I'm sure some of you are um, horrified as you you hear that, but and maybe you've had similar experiences. But the thing that was quite um, interesting about it is uh, at the same time as not being able to do anything, I didn't have to take any responsibility at that time. And it was blissful. Um, so there was a bliss about not having to take responsibility at that time. As I started to recover and I started to go out and shop again for myself, I went to a little tiny shop in um, Worcester, which is a a city not far from here. And I went into this shop and it was a day when I was feeling really at rock bottom. And on the shelf in this uh, this, uh, little shop were some some vegetables. And it was at a time when I was just really trying to um, get the very, very best deal I could. And there was this box of carrots and there were only four carrots left in this box. And they were the wonkiest, weirdest carrots you've ever seen. And um, I um, started to fiddle through the box and I put these carrots into a bag. And I had this one uh, carrot that that came, came out. And it was, if you can imagine it, it was split. So it had grown two parts to it a little bit like the one on screen and then in the middle of this this split um coming up from the split was something that looked like a body and a head at the top with the green carrot top still coming out and then between what now looked like the legs of this carrot person was a little winky was a little male part and out of this little winky part was a strand of um, root, like a root hair, and it looked like it was having a wee. And I got the giggles. And I couldn't, the giggles started coming and coming, and I couldn't stop laughing. And 
And as I, as I laughed out loud, the person who owned the shop came over and started asking what was going on. And then she got the giggles. And um, by the time I got to the till and, and I said to her, I actually haven't laughed like that for over a year. It was so funny. And it was such a lovely moment. And in that moment, when she said to me, do you know what? Um, I told her a little bit about what had happened. She said, you can have those carrots. So I took those carrots home for, for free. And as I was cooking these carrots in the evening, and I, I can't tell you how gorgeous this carrot tasted. The, these carrots tasted amazing. Um, but as I was, as I was um, cooking these carrots, um, I started to think about the way that um, these, these carrots had given me a gift. Now, it was a few years later that wonky vegetables started coming into the supermarkets. But in that time between making that soup with those carrots and this um, fabulous uh, um, eating that soup and feeling so good and this and this this laughter that came in, it was a real turning point for me. And I thought to myself, if these weird wonky carrots can have such a positive effect, can actually shift for me and help me laugh and help me fit, enjoy life again then i want to i want to find out what the other ways are of doing that and i, I want to put that together so the wonky life movement was kind of born a few years later when i saw these carrots and other vegetables appearing in supermarkets with um be, being called what wonky vegetables so the wonky life is when life goes wrong but the perfectly wonky life is when you take whatever wonkiness you've got and you make something good out of it and that's really the, the 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 essence of this perfectly wonky life movement so what perfectly wonky life is is it's a facebook page um which is about 150 people engaged with that facebook page now we're also on instagram as well um and off the back of um me sharing some of the tools and ideas here today um uh, you're very welcome to to come and join that facebook group i'll give you the details of that later on um it's what we do on that facebook page is post regularly every day we post something that's uplifting and um inspiring and also there are blogs and uh links to other resources that you'll find there so the perfectly wonky life movement also offers um online courses we do some self and supported study courses um, in-person retreats so we do offer um, re meditation retreats and also one-to-one -one support um, as well so that's a little bit about the 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 um, perfectly wonky life so I'm just going to share a little bit with you about the the course and that's going to lead me into sharing with you some practical tools that you could take away um, and use one tool that you can download one I'm going to talk you through um, and another tool which is just a really great way of thinking about um, difficulties and challenges. And then I'll point you towards some resources and some ways of accessing some of the things I've talked about. So Perfectly Wonky online course is 12 hours of self-study. Um, so it's, it's delivered as a set of audios, um, there's some videos, there's some downloadable tools, there's lots of ideas in there, the different ways of thinking. And what I call moving from surviving when we're in those difficult points in our lives to um, thriving, to really feeling like you're, um, you're, you're, you, you've, you've got back on track and, and you're, you're making the best of your perfectly wonky life. So um, <clears throat> it might be that you've come along to this program today to, um, for yourself, or it might be you've come along for people that you know um and um although it may not be possible for everyone to access the course i hope that what you'll go away with at the end of this session is some definite at least three things that you can go away and use as a result of being here so the course is structured with um an introductory module online which is introduces the perfectly wonky life it gets you starting to think about um some of the things that uh, have been challenging to you, but some of the ways in which you, um, uh, you you have strengths and resources. And then the second module, there's a really great online tool which um, asks you lots of questions and it gives you a readout 
of what your strengths and resources are. Um, there's another module which looks at rewriting your story. So it's so interesting when we go through challenges, hardships and difficulties. Um, the, the thing that um, we, we can often do is in a very unconscious kind of way, so in a, in a very um, unaware kind of way, we can be telling stories about our lives and the way we, we are um and what's happened to us and i know back back in that time that i talked about about 12 years ago 13 years ago i was definitely telling myself some stories about how difficult my life had been um how unlucky i was and i, I look back now and i think um i was running some really unhelpful narratives i was talking about to myself about how um my life's never going to be good again um that I'm never going to be able to contribute something useful, and um, and that that narrative I, um, it need, needed rewriting. So what um, the the program does is it gives you some great tools for rewriting your your story, and rewriting the narrative you set you you have. It's also got something called the life balance compass, which is a really great way when things are really tough for you of looking at ways of bringing your life back into balance. And I'm going to share that with you in just a few minutes, what that compass looks like. And I'm going to point you to a tool where you can actually get hold of a tool and work through um, the, the, the work life balance compass together um, for, for yourself. And then the course has um, a whole bunch of techniques and tools we call it, I call it new habits and new tools for thriving. And I want to introduce you today to two of those tools that are in the course um one is called in the emotional freedom te techniques which um you may have come across i don't know um sometimes called tapping and it's a, a technique where you tap different parts of the body and through that tapping process and using a a, a reassuring phrase you can reset parts of your nervous system um that have become overwhelmed and traumatized by difficult events I love this process um, and in the work I do with young people and adolescents, it's so powerful in helping them to have a, a resource, a way of dealing with things that have been difficult and overwhelming for them. And there's loads now of brilliant research evidence on this being really effective for things like um, emotional trauma, for anxiety, um, for um uh cravings and for changing unhelpful ideas about ourselves um, as well so i'm going to share that with you so that's just an overview of, of the course um and if you were interested in the course I'll, I'll show you at the end where you can access it so let me just introduce you to a few ideas that either for you or people that you know need support that might well, might you know this might be useful for them so that the, the first idea I, i've already talked about this idea of the linear life the good childhood the great education the great career fall in love get married have a family and retire and live happily ever after so um that if we hang on to that idea of the linear life being the ideal but stuff happens in our lives like illness like relationship breakup, like bereavement, um, and, and, and. Um, if those things happen to us, then hanging on to that way of looking at your life is painful. Because what we do is we, we hang on to the idea that we don't have that anymore. So what one of the things that um, I've, I've found through the work I do with my private clients and also the work I do um uh in in other areas of of um uh of, of my my coaching and counseling work is to encourage people to look at their life more in terms of cycles of life cycles within a life and this idea of a cyclical life rather than a linear life can be really helpful especially in that that deep recovery stage of things being um, difficult and challenging. So um, the, the metaphor here, the idea behind this is about one about sailing, being, being on the sea and sailing. And 
so at any stage in our life we can look at our situation as um maybe being in full sail which is when things are going um really well the doldrums where things are not going so well where we haven't got wind in our sails where we're feeling um perhaps exhausted perhaps worn down perhaps burnt out by what's been happening to us and then the importance of taking um to harbor so that um having a, a cycle where we withdraw a little where we take time to reflect maybe use some of the tools and strategies that we've got uh in our own toolkits to um start to work on the the thoughts the emotions the the grief um that that we might be experiencing and then having done that process we can then start to think in that taking to harbor what we want to do next and we start to set sail again and this as we set sail and we have um new ways of looking at our situation um we can move towards full sail again so you know as an example of that i really see that um um uh, happening um, in a, a client of mine recently who was um, about two years ago diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and that the, this diagnosis because it's although it's a treatable it's not a curable condition had been had really ta taken them by storm and it it um, massively affected the way that they were seeing their life it interrupted their education but to start to look at, instead of looking at what they'd lost and what was interrupted, starting to look at what they needed to do to get themselves into a place of balance, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, what they needed to do um, to adjust their goals and ideas um, going forwards. That was really helpful to them to see it in terms of, um, I need some time to take stock to, um, to work on myself and get myself into a greater sense of balance. And that's the taking to harbour. I've reset my goals because now I've got uh, medical um, uh, needs. I've got um, appointments that I need to go to. I need to take really good care of myself um, through that process. And then I can set sail into that new way of looking at things. So instead of seeing our lives as one long um, pathway, we see it through this cyclical life as a series of cycles that we go through. Um, I'm 55 this year, um, which um, I don't know how that's happened. I don't know how I got to this age. It seems really quite um, surprisingly how thing, fast things have gone um, in, in my life. But um, um, I'm finding this really helpful myself at the moment to think about um, where I am in a, in a cycle, because um, there are certain parts of my work that are, have changed since the pandemic. And um, so taking to harbour has been something I've been doing a lot recently to reflect on that and start to look at areas that I want to contribute to going forward. Um, full sail for me now is really important around um getting enough rest and sleep because my short-term memory massively um reduces if i get overtired so i have to be really kind of thoughtful of that so there's one idea that might be helpful to you thinking about your life in cycles of um uh full sail recognizing when things are um, moving into a slower pace things aren't moving as quickly as you maybe would like coming into a place of reflection nurturing renewal setting your sights on and setting your sails on something new so that you can return to a new phase i mentioned a couple of times there about being in balance and um so this is another idea that you may find helpful um so the the idea of a compass and um, the compass having four points. So I've renamed the points here. And these points relate to different parts of our human being, of us as, as human beings. Um, the um, original Sanskrit, uh, um, uh, what's the word? The original Sanskrit meaning of the word Nirvana 
was uh, liberation, freedom. Um, so that's the spiritual point of the compass. Um, the E, the east of the compass is the emotional part of ourselves. The south point of the compass is somatics. Somatics is, is the physical. So that's looking at uh, exercise, sleep, nutrition, hydration. And then um, wit and the, the, the kind of old word of the wit. Um, we often take the word wit now to mean humour but it originally meant intelligence. So it's about thoughts. And as I talked about earlier, the stories, the narratives and the ideas that, that we have. And then um, right at the center of this um, compass is this, um, this little gem, this little jewel. I call it the jewel bearing. Um, and it's the stillness, the place where in order to reflect on and think about how we balance the spiritual, the emotional, the physical, and the uh, mental in our lives, we need to come to a place of stillness, of quietness. It's not until we're in a place of real stillness and quietness that we can truly know what we need. Uh, otherwise, there's too much interference, there's too much talk. So um, what I'm going to um, leave you with to... Um, to, to go away and have a play with after the session today is a, um, a a tool that you can download. I've just got one here. So it looks like this. You can either look at it on a screen um, or you could, if you have the facility to print it off, you can print one off. And what, it, um, what this tool does is it offers you um, instructions and some really wonderful uh, reflective questions to help you to think about small simple ways that you can help yourself to get back in balance when things in life have been a bit um, overwhelming a bit difficult so just to give you a couple of examples there example um, uh, in Nirvana it asks you um, about what you see is your main purposes in life. Um, so it might be that your part of your purpose is to raise your children. Um, it might be to do with your work, it might be to make a contribution, it might just be to get through the day. And I know that, you know, for, for myself and many of my clients have been times when it's just to get through, through the day. Um, uh, Emily Wapnick uh, did a brilliant uh, TED talk a few years ago um, about the uh, this idea that we have many purposes in our lives that we're we, we we're often asked you know if we go any kind of self development work we're often asked well what what's your purpose in life but actually we have many purposes and those feed into um, our family our friends our work our contribution um, and so forth um, so the, this tool offers you some instructions in that that piece at the top it says grounding a lovely self-reflective um calming um way of just grounding yourself of bringing yourself into a place where your mind is quieter your body feels still and then you can move around this compass with these um four areas and use the tool to ask questions of yourself to lead you to the end of the tool that it asks you as a result of what you've looked at um, in in these four areas of the compass what small changes can you make so that your life comes more into into balance so that's uh that's a lovely tool that you can download so if you go to willthomascoaching.com the website you can you'll find that on that page there's a, a little pop-up box and it asks you for your email. If you put your email in, it will email you that tool so you can have a play with that. So I'm gonna share now with you another tool that's on the course. I'm gonna show you the emotional freedom techniques. Um, I discovered this uh, in, a, as part of the recovery process from, from my head injury. Um, a friend of mine said, um, cause I was really struggling to, I couldn't articulate my emotions. I was really struggling with, um, being able to say what was going on and with emotional freedom techniques when you've got trauma emotional trauma overwhelm often you can't 
put into words what you're experiencing. And trauma, which we can define as anything that happens to you um, that happens too fast for too long um, or, or um, uh, is, is too much for the resources that you've got to deal with it will, will cause emotional trauma. And emotional trauma is when our body literally goes into um, a hyper state, hyper alertness state. And um, a particular part of the brain, the amygdala, uh, becomes super sensitive to uh, things, triggers around us, anything that relates back to what caused the trauma. So, um, you know, if you've if you've had a bad experience with, say, a, um, a dog or if um, uh, you've been bullied at school, then anything that's similar to that that happens in your life um, could re-trigger that those traumatic experiences and this emotional freedom technique it's 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 a whole set of approaches a whole set of ways of resetting the nervous system um and um it sounds really odd when you start to talk about how you do it and, I, and i've put up the standard protocol here for this but it's emotional freedom techniques use uses acupressure points so the points where um if you've heard of acupuncture before the um it's an ancient chinese um uh medical approach of inserting needles into specific points energy points around the body um with emotional freedom techniques we don't put needles into our body but we tap and we tap on the specific um point so there's a point on the side of the hand there's a point on the inner edge of the eyebrow, the side of the eye, underneath the eye, underneath the nose, on the chin, on the collarbone, uh, under the arm, and the top of the head. There are others as well that, that we can sometimes use. So the way that you use this technique, and I, I teach this to every single one of the clients I work with in private practice therapy now, and all the children and adolescents I work with in schools and many of the teachers, because it's just such a quick, easy way to um, reset your nervous system, to dial down difficult emotions and to um, to release from your body the physical tensions that we hold when we've been through traumatic experiences. So what you do, you, you start off, I'm going to just share with you the standard protocol for doing this, the standard method. You start off with the focus area. Um, so um, you, if, if you were doing this with yourself, you'd think about what is it that I want to feel better about? What is the area that's bothering me at the moment? So let's say um, I... I had a traumatic experience with a, a an angry dog that when I was walking to the shops this morning. So what you do is you just focus on that for a moment and then you give it a score out of 10. Um, one is a very low score and 10 is the highest. So the most anxious or panicky or um, afraid or whatever the emotion is that you feel that. You name it, so I might call that um, bad dog experience and then we start tapping on the side of the hand and if we're tapping on the side of the hand we use a statement which we say out loud you can do it in your head as well um, even though I have this and then we would use the name of this that we'd given it this bad dog experience I totally and completely accept I have this and we repeat that again, even though I have this bad dog experience, I totally and completely accept I have this. And then we do it one more time on the side of the hand, even though I have this bad dog experience, I totally and completely accept I have this. And then we would move to tap on the other points, just using the name, bad dog experience, bad dog experience, bad dog experience three times on each point, bad dog experience, bad dog experience, bad dog experience. And then I go around to all of the points doing the same, bad dog experience, bad dog experience, bad dog experience. I'm on the chin now, and then to the collarbones, you can do both sides. A lot of people like to do both sides as they're tapping, bad dog experience, bad dog experience. And then bad dog experience, bad dog experience. 
and then the top of the head, bad dog experience, bad dog experience. Okay, and then we, when we've done that, we stop, we take a deep breath in and out. We do that again, in and out, and then we give it a score again. So we just check in with ourselves, what's the score on that now? So maybe I started with a nine, um, and maybe I'm down to a five. So what I do now then is I rename it. So what's it called now? And what you'll usually find, whether you're doing it with yourself or if you're helping someone else with this, is that the, the score will have gone down and usually the name's changed as well. And it's often something that's a little bit less extreme than it was. So instead of bad dog experience, it might be um, naughty dog experience uh, or that dog. And um, we repeat the process again. And we keep doing that cycle until it's down to a one or a zero. And at that point where it's a one or a zero, um, we've tapped out that trigger on, on that thing. So in the short time we've got, that's a very quick introduction to this. Um, what I'm in the process of doing at the moment for um, the Recovery and Wellbeing College in Worcestershire is putting together a um a short course on um emotional um, freedom techniques um and so Anne, i will let you know when that's complete because i think that's something we could make available and although the um the cost of doing the full perfectly wonky life course I, i'll come on to in, in a little while if that's kind of out of reach um, for you or not the right thing for you at the moment, um, I think we could make we could find a ways of making that EFT course really available um, for, for people. So if you like the idea of this, it's really helpful. One of the things that's so brilliant when I'm working with young people with this is that um, they don't really need to talk very much about what the issue is. So, you know, with the focus area, it's it's sufficient to say I've got a problem with this or I've got a feeling about this and you can work through this with them or you can teach them to do it for themselves that's the other brilliant thing about it um, and they can work on things that they might either find it difficult to talk about to, to kind of find the words to talk about or if it's uncomfortable to talk about so I use this a, a, a whole lot with um, uh, young people and adults who've been uh, through really traumatic experiences it's a, it's a fantastic trauma technique there are some other ways of doing it that is is sort of one the standard protocol is one of about probably 40 different ways you can you can use some um, emotional freedom techniques what i would say is if you're working with somebody else um then um definitely get some training uh in uh, using emotional freedom techniques particularly if it's with trauma because there are some other things that are important to be aware of um, when you're doing that but um yeah, so that's EFT. I'm conscious of time, so I'm just going to actually, it's, this is the penultimate slide, I think, um, anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I want to leave you with the, this little set of questions. These are also in the course. And I found this kind of idea really helpful with um, many of the client group that I work with. And it's a way of taking the difficulties in your life and um, breaking them down into three different parts. So the first part is this situation that I'm in right now, um, what can I control about it? So the control bit is always about working on the thoughts and feelings that we have inside ourselves. So the only thing we can really control in life is, us, is ourselves. So um, using tools, techniques, and ways of working, like some of the things we've looked at today, to work on yourself and learn how you can dial down emotions and how you can change the thoughts that you have, become aware of them and, and change them. What can I influence? Those are the things that you can um, encourage other people to change. So if you work in an organization where you want, you need um, different systems to operate, different um, ways. I, I often find this in school where I've got, um, I'm working with young people who are really um, different in the way they think. Then they're really neurodiverse. And I often have to 
um, either support them to influence or encourage other people to do things differently for them to accommodate their needs. And then the last area is what might you need to come to accept? We can really spend a lot of time in our lives, a lot of um, time worrying and um, being um, uncomfortable about things we've got no control over. So the serenity question tool here says, what are the things that are going on for us right now that we can't do anything about? And how can we let those go? What is it that we need to do to let those go? So that's a really helpful um, way of looking at challenges that we might meet. So to finish up, um, just a reminder about the course there and the, the different elements of the course. So we've looked at some of the things that, that are in the course. Um, here are some places you can go, some things you can um, uh, look at. So completely free to join us on Facebook in the um, Perfectly Wonky Life. So um, search Perfectly Wonky Life on Facebook, find us there. And um, I'd love to engage with you there. That would be really good. We're also on Instagram. I'm not so good with Instagram. So um, we, we tend to, but you, you'll see the same material on Instagram as Facebook. But um, the, the Facebook group is really where uh, the Perfectly Wonky Life community has, has kind of um, grown up. Um, if you want to do the course, then you can um, access it through the link that's just underneath there. It is a, should all actually be lowercase, willthomascoaching.com, products, pwl.ssf. Um, and if you do sign up to the course, um, the Perfectly Wonky Life are going to give SSF 15% of, the, um, of the, the course fee. So you're also making a donation to SSF there as well. Um, and if you just want to get in touch and have a chat, there's my email address. So um, it's been so lovely to have this opportunity to um share with you um we've got a few minutes left so i just wonder if there's any questions and um and what you might be taking away from what we've talked about what i've shared with you today <laughs>